Hello, everyone. Um, time for our, a little story from the land of uh, B2B marketing. Um, so we've just had Halloween season. Christmas is coming up, another season. I think what we have right now should probably also be Hawk, a B2B marketer season. It's, uh, it's tough times out there for those of you who are in, in B2B marketing. To talk you through kind of why that is, uh, I've prepared three sections and three marketing memes. I'll go through it in these 10 minutes. So let's start with the, the first meme. <laughs> this is some of the things we're facing in, uh, particularly in B2B, because when we buy a click in, uh, in B2B, we'll get an organic visit to our website. It's probably gonna be six or 12 months and a lot of webinars and social touches, et cetera, before we see any revenue. That's annoying because then the sales team gets all the credit. So we need to solve that. Um, my name is uh, Stefan. I'm a co-founder of a company called Dream Data. I think the best way to describe my skills is like I'm a B2B marketing nerd. So we can talk about that uh, afterwards, anywhere, anything related to that. Uh, I got quite uh, excited when I got invited to, to do this presentation as uh, it's called a hot take. And I actually literally wrote a hot take on LinkedIn on this topic, saying that I actually believe that less marketers would get fired if they excelled in attribution. And the reason why I think that is that we as marketers need to be very accountable for all the money we spend. We need to impact our business in a positive direction. And if we can't explain why we're doing the things we're doing, why we're spending the budget we're spending, well, then when bad times comes around, who's on the chopping board? It probably is the marketers. So what's the, uh, what's the, what can we do about it to, to not get fired? To me, uh, that uh, discipline of attribution feels a little bit like the cheat codes for computer games. I remember when I was a kid, there would always be some code you can type into that game and uh, you know, level up or get more money to buy more guns or whatever the game was. To me, attribution is that, because if, if I know exactly how we got our customers, I can just go back and repeat that exercise and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, which means I can explain we should do this and we should not do that. And then the C-levels, the CFOs will not complain so much because I can actually account for the money I spent and the money we yielded or the revenue we, we yielded from those activities. Okay, three sections. What's happening right now? Well, um, consumer confidence is at an all-time low. That means people's belief in whether a thing's gonna turn into a positive thing in the future, like if we invest money, is it gonna be a positive outcome right now? Most people think not. At least it's, an, it's at a long-time low for that sake. When you then look at what's happening to the marketing budgets out there, that's very reflected here. 58% of marketers say that the budget had, has been decreased or has at least remained the same. Boring. <laughs> what's also happening out there is that a lot of companies are doing layoffs and particularly marketers are on the chopping board. 17% of marketers has been fired. Oh, well, then you think, okay, let's lower the expectations. Let's, uh, let's give the people a breather. No, that's not what's happening. In these surveys that Pavilion does every month, you can see that actually 57% of uh, the revenue, revenue leaders, the go-to-market leaders, they're getting larger budgets, though they're cutting all the, all the marketing spend. So it's a pretty tough time to, to be alive as a, as a B2B marketer. <laughs> and to make the matters worse, we get less and less insights into what are people actually doing before they're buying our product. Things take place outside of our websites. They've taken place on these social platforms as we've heard about today. So we need to wire ourselves to, to this new world where things is getting a lot harder. Second marketing meme. Good, next session. So that was kind of the, the world, the environment. Now let's look at why B2B can be extremely painful to be in sometimes as a marketer. Um, my company, Dream Data, we help our customers understand their customer journeys. So we have a quite unique data set in terms of B2B companies. 
In this survey, I'm going to show you, or survey benchmark, where I'm going to show you here, we examined the customer journeys of 414 customer journeys, or companies' customer journeys, and this is what we found. An average B2B journey took 192 days from the click on an ad or the visit from Google or the first interaction with a webinar until you see a client becoming a customer. 192 days. Well, okay, it gets worse because if you're dealing with larger accounts, it takes longer. It takes 64% longer if there are plus 250 employees. And if you don't tell your managers, your CEOs, your CFOs to align towards this reality, then you're going to hit targets or uh, miss targets a lot of times. There's an average of 31 sessions touches on the website before you see a deal. They come from more than three channels. So it's very, very complex to be in our B2B world. What we then found also looking at all these customer journeys was these facts that it actually matters for which channel you acquire people from. Um, if you get them from a review website like G2 or Capterra or somewhere else, it on average, it actually only takes 70 days from the first time you see them until they buy. Whereas if they come from organic social, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., it takes 222 days, a long while. I guess it makes sense because if people come that organic path, they're probably just curious about who you are and like what's your product, but they're not in a buying mode right now. And then there's other channels that you can actually spend your time on where people are actually in market right now. Good. Last marketing meme. Okay, so a lot of the pressing stuff. What, what can we do to kind of uh, combat this? How can we succeed as B2B marketers in, the, in this world? Um, one thing you can do is you can align with your sales team like never before. This is uh, Laura, our sales leader for the, for the US. But what I mean here is really in B2B marketing, success can only be achieved when the sales team sells something. It's a very annoying fact, but we have to see the sales team closing those contracts. So you as a marketer need to constantly be uh, surveying the sales team, asking them, do you like the leads we're seeing at the moment? Are we doing the right content? Is there anything you can't answer? Is there anything I can help you with? Is there enough success cases? Is there enough reviews, etc.? Making sure that you kind of clean the road for the sales team, making sure that they have an easy job as possible, closing deals. Then uh, you need to use this knowledge that I've just shared with you about how long B2B actually takes. It means that you need to reverse engineer the sales target the sales team has and build that into your marketing playbook because it's going to take you six months. So if the sales team has a target for Q4, well, you need it to be starting that in Q2. Otherwise, the pipeline is not going to be thick enough to actually close the deals that are needed. You definitely need to switch your focus from generating leads, generating marketing qualified leads, or whatever you call it in your company, to monitoring the stuff that is actually producing the deals that you win. Now, this is, uh, this is actually from our own uh, Dream Data account, and I can very clearly see that, hey, I have some channels that can produce me a ton of uh, leads, but you know what? A lot of them don't appear when I look at what is generating revenue. So focus that shift from just generating conversions of leads to what is producing money, revenue. Okay, two slides more, we're done. My recipe for kind of succeeding in this tough environment right now is to still use just your gut feeling to generate the ideas, but don't jump on them before you've kind of rationally scored them between all the things that you could be spending your time on right now. You need to build a strong narrative of why are we doing the things we're doing right now. You need to test that narrative against other people in your company. Tell the CFO, tell the sales team, tell the product team, we're going to do X, Y, Z. What do you think about this idea? You need to measure your marketing activities against revenue. And last but pr probably most important, once you take decisions about putting a lot of money into one bucket, you need to have real data that can prove that this is a good decision. Start with gut feeling, but once you put a lot of money into a bucket, then you need to bring data. Good.
checklist for um, if you want to know more about your customer journey. Um, actually, I don't know if the slides are available afterwards, but that's the checklist that I don't want to go too deep into it. And I'm out of time. If you want to follow me, connect on uh, LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening.